Aliens arriving on Earth first kill an entire small town and then bring half of its population back to life. Although it's hard to call it life. We searched for a new home. We found this planet. Somewhere in Pennsylvania, in the small town of Burridge, a family sits down for dinner. Suddenly, there is a loud bang outside. The lights go out and people briefly come to their senses before dying. Later on, exobiologist Lauren Stone hears news reports on TV about a powerful explosion in Burridge that killed the entire population of the town, 1,300 people. The air in the settlement is poisoned by some toxic substance, and the theory that the explosion occurred at the local chemical plant becomes increasingly popular. Lauren takes a bath and remembers herself, her father, and the field she used to run through. Her memories are interrupted by the arrival of the military, although Lauren does not quite understand how she can help with the investigation. Colonel Emmerich introduces her to astrobiologist Santiago. Geologists confirmed that the accident was the result of a meteorite impact, which released a deadly gas. That's why they were invited to the crash site. The military will be grateful for any evidence they find that can shed light on the nature of the incident. Emmerich assures Lauren that he chose her because he read her work, but asks her to take an alcohol test. Scientists are dressed in protective suits and taken to the meteorite crash site. On the way, Santiago praises her book on microbiology in Antarctica and signs of extraterrestrial life. But the woman doesn't engage in conversation. Arriving at the site, the pair only sees a snowy field and a small pile of ground. While Santiago inspects the area, Lauren notices a small sprout of some red plant and pities it for growing in such a terrible place. Upon arriving home, Lauren begins to search for similar cases and finds mention of a similar incident. In 2013, a meteorite exploded over the city of Chelyabinsk in Russia, and an interview with the local resident was filmed by American television. She recounted that after the meteorite fell, a poisonous gas spread throughout the area, causing many people to die. It was also said that a very large tree grew at the site of the impact, around which all living things died. The tree was cut down and information about the incident was kept secret. In the postscript to the interview, journalists reported that the woman was killed almost immediately after it. The next day, doctors begin to perform an autopsy on the man who died in the ridge, and at first, everything looks completely normal. But when the doctor makes an incision, a strange blue liquid begins to seep out, which then returns to the body after a short time, and the wound heals. But even more surprising is the resurrection of the man, who suddenly sits up on the table and silently looks down, not reacting to the voices of those around him. The man has no pulse or blood pressure, and his body is cold. In other words, by all indications, the man is dead. Suddenly, there are cries behind the door. It turns out that another 40 people suddenly opened their eyes and came back to life. The doctors tried to get some kind of reaction from the resurrected, but to no avail. They are all residents of the town center, who not only inhaled the poisonous gas, but also ingested some substance that led to DNA transformation. And the only thing the resurrected do is occasionally turn around. Meanwhile, Lauren tells Emmerich about the Chelyabinsk meteorite. But the people in Russia were also victims, which means that this is someone's terrible plan. But the colonel does not believe in conspiracy theories. Later, a government commission discusses the incident and proposes simply destroying the bodies before it's too late. But to get answers, all the data must be carefully studied, otherwise Manhattan could be next. Later, the woman buys alcohol and drinks it while sitting in the car, reminiscing about the trip she took with her father to a secret place. The next day, Lauren goes to a room where the revived people are sitting and selecting a girl tells her about the book her mother used to read to her when she was a child, who has long since passed away. At that moment, her phone rings and a photo of the red plant from the scene of the incident appears on the screen and the girl suddenly grabs Lauren's hand. The woman tells her colleagues about this and suggests that the plant is to blame. Santiago notices that all the survivors are looking in one direction, to the north, where the crash site is located. And then the colonel confesses that they found a sapling, but they don't know what it is because the plant is huge and continues to grow. The thing is that the area is sealed off and the plant was only noticed when it became visible from a distance. It turns out that it wasn't a meteorite that fell on the ground, but a huge seed. A team of scientists is sent to the site, taking one of the revived with them. They bring him to an unimaginably huge tree on a cart and watch from a distance, but he remains motionless. 
And when people have lost all hope, the man in the wheelchair suddenly moves, raises his head, looks in surprise at his hands and the snow under his feet. And then he admits that he can survive in the Earth's environment, so he will stay here. Upon returning, Lauren reports that the tree is generating the necessary environment for its survival, including the air that is toxic to humans. The aliens arrived on Earth through special portals that scientists call wormholes. She is bombarded with questions, revealing that she has had problems with alcohol and prohibited substances. Later, a psychotherapist calls her answering machine, who is waiting for her at a session as part of his sentence. They were supposed to discuss her childhood memories that are haunting her, but she didn't show up. At that moment, her father shows up at the door, but Lauren is not pleased to see him. He tries to start the conversation and recalls how on her 8th birthday she asked for a scientific laboratory and they gave her an old barn. However, her obsession with space spiraled out of control and her mother became worried. Sometime later, the colonel summons Lauren again. The alien wants to speak but only with her as he sees her as a friend. They have prepared a list of questions and ask her to find out where they came from and why they came. The alien explains that their home is no longer suitable for their species. They were searching for a new home and found it using coordinates received from a human with the call sign Supernova 94. From that same human, the aliens learned all the strengths and weaknesses of humans. The alien asks the military to leave and Lauren admits that the tree will soon destroy everything as it is harming the planet. The alien then says that humans will not be able to stop them because they are used to fighting and they have abilities. And here Santiago starts acting strangely. He drops his suitcase and begins to unzip his protective suit. The military personnel try to contain him, but they cannot do anything. The man falls to the ground and tears the hose from the mask of a soldier who is trying to help him. The soldier removes his useless mask and dies. Then one of the soldiers suggests shooting the alien. And just then they are hit by a sound attack that drives them crazy and they open fire on each other. One of the survivors takes stunned Lauren away. Later a fighter jet armed with missiles is sent to the tree. The pilots see a small figure of a person at the base of the tree and receive orders to attack the target. But suddenly an impenetrable dome covers the tree. The missiles explode causing no harm to the tree. Meanwhile, the news reports that the FBI is searching for a person with the nickname Supernova 94 who seems to be responsible for the expansion. People around the world tell stories about strange sounds that occasionally come from unknown sources. In some places, smoke emerges from the ground, killing all living things. People pray day and night, and martial law has been imposed in many countries. The earth trembles, crops die, and vegetables rot in the ground. One day, Lauren goes to her father's house, but first she approaches the locked barn, which has a sign that reads Lauren's Laboratory. But after looking at the house, she walks away and heads towards the tree. For many years, she has been tormented by the question of who or what she is. The end of the world is approaching, but she feels relief, as if she will finally live freely. And she plans to find the truth right here. She meets the alien who tells her that the tree is undergoing transformation. Feeling the tremble under her feet, Lauren lies down on the ground and listens to the hum of the planet. The time has come, new life is growing, and all of this has happened because of her. And finally, Lauren remembers the day when her father brought her to a secret base where an unidentified flying object had been brought down. Her father left her to wait in the corridor. Bored, she wandered through the rooms, listening to her father being instructed about a powerful and hostile creature that had tried to plan something before it was shut down by the military. The girl found a sarcophagus containing the alien and reached out to the glass. Suddenly, the creature reached out and touched the glass from the other side. She screamed in terror, not understanding what strange thing was happening to her, causing her to lose consciousness. The frightened guards found her and took her to her father. But the girl looked healthy and left with your father. Only from that day on, Lauren hasn't been quite herself. She draws super complex designs of interstellar ships and writes incomprehensible formulas. At school, she constantly gets in trouble, skillfully manipulating not only her classmates but also her teachers, calling herself an alien who wants to go home. And one day, Lauren tunes a transmitter she has built and contacts a distant planet, taking the call sign Supernova 94. 
Her parents are horrified and forbid her from entering the laboratory. Lauren smashes toys, draws on walls and tells her mother the date of her death. It is then that her father learns of her new DNA. The girl seems to be changing, becoming something other than human. Adult Lauren sobs in horror at her discovery, but the alien welcomes her home and she remembers telling the distant planet all about Earth. Meanwhile, mysterious egg-shaped objects begin to appear all over the planet. They emerge everywhere, in forests and cities, deserts and mountains. And one day they suddenly explode, spreading black smoke that kills all life around them. And no one can hide or survive as the roots have already penetrated the entire Earth. The planet is no longer suitable for the human race. All earthly species and plants have been extinct. The evolution of a new species has begun and Lauren's journey has come to an end. She's finally home. And this is where the movie ends.